Whew. Y'all ready for some good preaching? <laughs> me too. Y'all let me know if y'all hear about any. I'm always looking for some, some good preaching out there. Uh, speaking of good preaching, I, I think I got some more episodes. Or I got some. Uh, I'd like to get. Some, I need to get some more out there, Brother Charles. So if you're looking for some good preaching too, go for uh, our, our Facebook. Uh, I put some links to some of Brother Charles' sermons out there. Man, they're good. Hey, he likes to sing during this sermon. I wish I could sing like him. <laughs> he just busts out and sings during some of those sermons. All right. Well, Lord, I'm I'm asking you, Lord, for some good preaching this morning. So I like to tell a story. You know, when I was younger. I worked in various construction jobs. My my first one, well, my first one was working for my godfather's demolition company. You know, being 17 years old, I um with zero experience. Uh, I wasn't allowed to operate or drive the the equipment. <laughs> you know, that, that's that makes sense until I, I learned it. But eventually, though, I, I was able to drive the bobcat, operate some of the heavy machinery, use the uh, equipment. Uh, but I started out as a helper. You know, that's what I did. The first thing I had was a broom and a, a broom and a shovel. That was, those are the only tools I was allowed to use. I was the helper. I helped out clean up all the mess. And then, you know, I worked to the point where I got, they trusted me on certain jobs. My godfather would let me work on a project by myself. I started a project by myself. Uh, but eventually, my godfather's name is Chuck, by the way. His demolition company had we needed more workers because we had so many jobs going on. Uh, and so we just had a three-man crew. So most of the helpers, though, that we got, I will say this, were absolutely the worst workers I've ever seen in my entire life. And to this day, the helpers that we had were still the worst <laughs> still the worst workers I've ever seen. Uh, the first string of helpers were so bad that we are better off without them. Um, then we got this guy. His name was Timmy. He was actually a decent helper. And uh, Timmy had experience. He worked with our crew in the past. And then Timmy, Timmy, though, he thought he was God's gift to Shamrock Demolition. That's literally his own words. And in just one month, Timmy was acting like he was the foreman already. And uh, he knew some stuff, but he really wasn't that knowledgeable that he'd be the foreman. But that's, you know, he had confidence. Uh, He even got to the point where he was actually trying to tell the foreman what to do. And uh, every time he would get so Timmy would get so mad. This is this still makes me laugh. He would get so mad that he would yell and his fake teeth would fall out all the all the time. Uh, you know, Timmy really didn't have much to his name. He had just gotten out of out of prison. He you know put himself there. He he boasted of his story of why he went to prison. He robbed Home Depot. It's not not at gunpoint, but he would he would stay up in the rafters until they closed, and he would haul off with the stuff. And uh, he was kind of proud of that. I don't know why, but uh, so he didn't have anything. Well, one day he he actually got something to his name. He got a uh, a motorcycle that barely ran, and it was probably not even street legal. And I remember we were on the I was on the freeway. It was a Friday. It was a Friday afternoon. We were getting off work, and I was on the freeway, and he went boom past me with that motorcycle, and uh, he wanted to race, and I was. 17. I had a Mustang, 66. Obviously, I couldn't catch a motorcycle, but I was still stupid enough to punch the gas. I didn't catch him because he's got a motorcycle. Motorcycles are faster. And so Timmy, he slows down just enough so he can smile at me and smirk and and let me see a smile. When he did that, his fake teeth blew off. (laughs) And they busted all over. They busted all over the freeway. And I thought at this point, and of course, I, I laugh, but then I thought, though, after that, you know, that's the best helper that, that I've ever had. Sadly, that was the best helper that I've ever had. But, you know, it made me think in church, you know, we have, fortunately for our prayer life, we have a way better helper than Timmy. Have you ever had a hard time when you were praying? Especially when you get asked to pray. I know I've been there. We get put on, we feel get put on the spot, even when we're alone and we're, 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 we have a hard time. You know, scripture tells us, though, that we have a great prayer partner who helps us intercede before God, the Father. And Sammy, can we go to the next one, please? Uh, the Word of God states, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, 
For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. And he who knows, searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've guided me in preparation. I thank you for all the sermon preps. I thank you for all the, the teachers and mentors that I've had along the way. And most of all, I thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord. I ask the Holy Spirit empowers me to to. Not preach for me, but preach for you and do this for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, guide me in presentation. Amen. These verses, they point out that, that believers, we're not, we're not left alone. We're not left to our own resources and our sufferings and groaning. The Spirit helps us, and that's present, that's present tense. He keeps on helping. Y'all remember the Energizer Bunny, right? He keeps on going. <laughs> I think he stopped going because I don't see him anymore. <laughs> but, you know, the energizer, he keeps on going and going with well, the spirit. That's present tense. OK. And, you know, part of preaching and pastoring is I think you have to really go back to English school and to, to really catch the verses, you know, because that's really important that he keeps on helping, it, helping us in our weakness. It's not that the spirit helps us in those occasional times of weakness. OK, it's not occasional. In fact, our state is a constant state of weakness. And the Spirit continually helps us. Just as we are sustained by this glorious hope, which we, we read about earlier in the sermon series in Romans, also described, the Holy Spirit sustains us in our weakness. Now get this. I want you to lean in closely to this, all right? Now listen to me. We, as Christians, we have to embrace this weakness. We have to embrace our weakness because this weakness is, is what helps us lean on Christ. We're in a world today, especially if you're a man, if you're a man, we're, we're taught, well, I mean, maybe not, I don't know, I don't know, but at least when I grew up, it was taught men were supposed to be macho, right? We're supposed to be, you know, we are to a certain extent, but it, it teaches, it tells us that we have to have our own strength, that we need to be strong, and women too. You know, but we need to be weak to rely on the spirit to understand it. We have to embrace this, this weakness because we in our own selves do not have the power to do the things that, 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 that God wants us to do. We are sustained by his glorious hope and the, the Holy Spirit sustains us in our weakness. Yet many of us find ourselves perplexed in our prayer life. We don't know how to pray as we should. We are afraid to pray, and sometimes we just don't do it. We just don't pray. When we do pray, we pray selfishly, we pray ignorantly, and we pray narrowly. And yet again, the Spirit comes along to assist us in our weakness. The verse says the Spirit intercedes with us, with groanings too deep for words. Also, it is the Spirit who groans, and not we who groan. There's a little bit of mystery here. I like a little bit of mystery, just a little bit, not too much. You know why there's mystery here? Because we're gazing into the unseen spiritual realm where a great person and great forces are at work. And although we cannot understand it, we can take infinite encouragement from the fact that a groan may sometimes lead to the most spiritual of prayers. So it's important that we look at prayer, and it's most importantly that we are praying people. I know we are. We got a good, we got a good, we got a good prayer group. But you know what? We can always do better. Always do better. Pastor can always do better. One time, one time, I had someone ask me, uh, um, "How much? How much do I? How much? How much should I pray, Pastor?" And I said, "Well, you should pray a, a lot." <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, how much do you pray, Pastor? I said, well, that's not fair. I get paid to pray. <laughs> I don't think he liked that I said that. But we need to be, we, we, you know, there's, not ever, there's not ever too much prayer, y'all. <laughs> I mean, there is not ever too much prayer. So, I mean, there, I can't tell you how much. I can just tell you that there's never enough prayer. You know, it's important that prayer covers all our ministries, marriage, Y'all know I'm big on praying for marriage. We have to pray for our marriage. We have to pray for the pastor's marriage. 
all of our marriages, okay, and our homes. Why? Because we are under attack. How many people in here have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Guess what? You are at war. The enemy wants to mess with you. He hates marriage. He, he hates believers. He hates, he hates God. He wants to distract us. He wants to mess things up. He wants to distract things. We need to pray for all our careers, too. We need to pray for, and, and you know, it, it, we don't stop there. It, sometimes I feel like even the most, at times I feel like the most important prayer we pray is for our military. Why? Because God has used our military. God has used our military to sustain us for so long. What makes us the greatest nation in this world is, is well, it's, it's God. But God has used our military to make us the greatest nation in the world. So we pray for our military because we have we have we have some of the daughters that are out there serving. We have law enforcement. We pray for our law enforcement. We pray for our first responders. It's important that we pray for our elections, our president, no matter who he or she is. We pray for the president, no matter what they represent, what party they are. We pray for them. Same with state, federal, local politicians. Uh, it's important that we as a church, we seek God out with diligence, persistence, and devotion. We have, according to this passage, a great prayer partner with us, the Holy Spirit of God. Now I want to talk to you about who he is. All right, so I want you all to be following me on this next one. This next one's really good. Uh, Sammy, go to the next slide, please. So who is the Holy Spirit? You know, it, it, it still makes me, it still makes me, it still makes me laugh. You know, I got, we got some, Robert and I were, brother Robert and I were talking about Pentecostals this morning. I have Pentecostal friends. I love my Pentecostal friends, okay? I don't, I don't want to think I'm, I'm harping on them, but, you know, our, our Pentecostal friends, you know, they think that, that we're afraid of the Holy, the Baptists are afraid of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, that's just not, that's not the case. Um, and I'm not going to get into the doctrine right now. That's for another sermon, but, Let's talk about who the Holy Spirit is. He's the third person of the Trinity, along with God, the Father and God, the Son. Now, get this. All right. Lean in closely for this one. Now, watch this. He is a person, not a persona or not anything else. The Holy Spirit is a person. And it's important that we really understand that he's a person. It cannot be anything else because of the beautiful Trinity, which defines God as one God existing three co-equal, co-eternal, co-substantial and divine powers, sharing one essence, substance and nature. So they're God, the Father, God, the Son, Jesus Christ and God, the Holy Spirit. That's three distinct people, persons. The Holy Spirit is a person with a mind. Emotions, will, and communication abilities. Furthermore, the Holy Spirit is God. Which means he shares the same attributes such as omnipresence, goodness, righteousness, eternity, holiness, and truth. He's often called counselor. And that word I talked about earlier, helper. And he's a much, way much, much better helper than myself or Timmy or anybody else. Advocate which also means comforter. We need a lot of comfort. We need a lot of comfort these days. I, one of my last sermon, I, I think I, I, and I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I, I embraced my weakness up here. Uh, one of my weaknesses is that I need, I need, I need reassurance. I need that. Glad we got it. I'm glad that we have a Lord who, who is among many other great things reassures us. The word comforter is also the word used, the uh, Greek word uh, uh, for advocate. It means to call to one side, and it's used in the court of justice. It means a legal assistant, counsel for the defense. Just like the song I was singing earlier, my one defense. He is our one and only defense, y'all. The one who pleads another's cause. The word, this is the word that Jesus used here in John, uh, John 14, 16. When he said of the father that he would send another comforter. Now, most of us would probably have a tough time if we went to uh, went to go try to file our own paperwork. Right. And I don't think we even legally can in court. But in some cases, you can try to defend yourself. Right. But I don't think many of us know unless we're lawyers here or we're, we're, we're assistants to, to the attorney. 
how to file motions, briefs, and papers before the judge. So when, when a civil or, or, or criminal cases come up, most people, we get legal defense. We get someone to advise us and defend us. This person knows the law. He knows how to address the court. He's your legal representative. In, in some small ways, the Holy Spirit is like this before God. He's your legal representation. He's your guarantee of inheritance. He is your guide, the spirit of truth. He speaks for you when you don't know what to say. Yeah, I have my moments. I probably, I probably, me, me being a little bit overconfident, I probably think, I probably, oh, yeah, sure, I can go defend myself. You know, I, <laughs> my wife knows I'd probably get a longer sentence if I went to, to defend myself in the, in, the, in the court. Shut this guy up. So thank God we have, we have Jesus to take care of these things for us, you know. Now, this is really important. Next slides, please, Sammy. What he does. Or next one after that. Sorry, I meant to do that one next. The Holy Spirit, one of the most important things that he does for you is your salvation. He seals salvation. He leads you, leads us to Jesus Christ. He reveals God's thoughts to us. He teaches and guides believers. He fills believers with strength and wisdom. He intercedes for believers. He gives spiritual gifts. He gives life itself. He makes believers new. He unites believers with Christ. He enables believers to live victoriously over sin. And there's no other way but through the Holy Spirit to do these things. He controls believers who submit to God's word. The Holy Spirit is a variety of ministries. The word says he brings all the teachings of Jesus to our remembrance. Brother Robert's big on memorizing scripture, aren't you, Brother Robert? Now, thank God we have the Holy Spirit to help us remember these things. And also the Holy Spirit tells us to do our homework. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just common sense. You know, there's a difference. There's a big difference between coming up here and being guided by the Holy Spirit and winging it. You know, the Holy Spirit really is, I think, a lot of times is just common sense, just common discernment. It's just telling us to do, you know, tell, this Holy Spirit should be telling you to do the work, to telling you to study the word, should be pushing you to, to do things that bring you closer to God, to make you more conform to his image. He makes intercession based on the will of God. This is the garden of Gethsemane praying. This is the prayer that God always answers. Not my will, but yours be done. It is in harmony with the Lord's prayer when Jesus said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what 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 can we do? Go to the next one. I think I got one more on there. Just keep going. There we go. Let's leave it right there, Sammy. Let's just stay right there. What can we do? Ephesians 16, 8 or 6, 8 tells us that praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. It tells us that we should be diligent in our prayers and that we should be in the spirit. Simply put, that means that we are to be filled with the spirit. We are simply submitting our will to the spirit's will. It also means that we are not allowing anything else to become between us and God. We aren't living in any known disobedience to what God, to what is God's revealed will for us. Trust me, if God reveals something in your life that you need to get rid of or that you need to do, it ain't going to go away. And you ain't going to feel right until you do it, until you take your either, either get rid of it or do what God has called you to do. Some people like to confuse the idea of, of being baptized and being filled with the spirit is the same thing. I'll just say right here that being baptized with the spirit is a seal of salvation. It's talking about your original conversion experience. That only happens once. You can grieve the spirit of God and you can live in carnality as a believer, though. When God's word has clearly spoken to your heart and revealed an area of your life and you refuse to surrender that area, that is not being submissive to the spirit. 
It's a very dangerous position to be in, my friends, for you as a believer. You quench God's power in your life when you allow your unconfessed sin to go undealt with and unconfessed. Let me tell you what. The devil's going to try to confuse you. He's going to try to tell you that there's other ways to do it. He's going to try to tell you that you can't do it. That you shouldn't do it. That you're not good enough to do it. He could tell you all kinds of things, all kinds of negativity. The enemy doesn't even want you to go to church. <laughs> I don't know how many times he's probably told you there's, got, there's something else that you've got to do. No, this is more important. You know, for the longest time, I thought I never would be able to pick up the guitar again. I just, just, just couldn't play it. Because I thought the only way that I could play was through drugs and alcohol. I thought that I, I thought that I just that I just wouldn't play it, didn't, and I, I didn't want to play it. And I felt empty, not playing. But that was the devil telling me that, man. Maybe there's something in your life right now, and I'm just using myself as an example. Maybe the devil's telling you that that. That you're no good. Maybe the devil's telling you that that no one wants you to do this. That that that's not. But if God's telling you that that that's something you're gonna do, you're gonna know it's for a fact that God wants you to do it. If it's something that glorifies God, and it's something that's within His will, it will be clear. It'll be clear as day. And He wants you to. He wants you to serve Him. So tips on how to pray real quick. And we're going we're to land the plane, as, as Brother Bob says. It flaps, is it flaps out or flaps down? How do you say it? <laughs> we land the plane. Flaps down. flaps down. Okay, all right. Flaps down. We are coming, we're coming in for a landing on this sermon, all right? Hopefully it's not a crash landing. <laughs> you know, simple. I, I've said this a, a dozen upteen times in the pulpit. It is, it is so easy a child can understand it, okay? Most of the time, when it comes to God's word and, and God's will, prayer is the same thing. Pray on all occasions, okay? Don't ask me what occasions to pray for. Pray on every occasion. All occasions, all kinds of prayers. Be honest with God about how you feel. Spoiler alert, he already knows. <laughs> you can't keep it from him. A good, healthy relationship is built on honesty. You know, you know, Pastor Pastor Ron and I over here, uh, we went, we had a real awesome uh, prayer cohort group that we went to. Uh, we studied together a, a book that was all, it was really all about the simplicity of prayer and, and the power of just honest prayer. Because, you know, it's really just a conversation with your father, your one in heaven. And Brother Earl, he hadn't been here a while. Brother Earl's had some back problems. You know, Brother Earl, I'll use him. I'll use him as an example. People say, well, that brother can pray. That, but he can pray. But you know what Brother Earl's doing? He's just having an honest conversation with God. He's really in tune with God, and he loves to pray. It's as simple as that. He didn't go to seminary school. He didn't go do anything fancy. He just loves to pray, and he loves to talk to God. And he knows that God's listening. <laughs> and he loves you. He loves you. Be sincere. Be specific. Don't just pray God bless the ministries, uh, you know, the missionaries or the ministries. Let's play specific ones. We have, we have our, 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 our keepsake. Stitch ministries. Pray for them specifically. Pray for the missionaries that just came here specifically. If you don't know how to pronounce his name, I never get it right. It's Dr. Victor Vindundu. It almost sounds like doo-doo. But pray for Dr. Victor. Pray for his ministries in Africa and Benin, Africa. Linda Livear Ministries. Pray for our christ Center churches. Pray for the Southern Baptist denomination. Be determined and don't ever give up. 
And finally, if God searches the hearts of his children, he can also interpret the mind of the spirit. Even though that mind finds expression, it only groans. The important thing is that the Holy Spirit's prayers for us are always according to the will of God. And because they are always in accordance to the, to, with God's will, they're always, as my granny Jackson used to say, it's for your own good. Boy, I hate it. I hate it when she would tell me that one. I, I, oh, it drove me nuts <laughs> when she's telling me that. <laughs> because I wouldn't you know, Obviously, when you're telling a kid that, it's because they don't want to do it. It's for you. It's for your own good. With all this stuff is for my own good. If I, I don't think it is because I don't like it. Well, guess what? It's for your own good. You know, God is working for your own good, whether you believe it or not, or whether you feel like it, he's working always in all things together for good for those who love him. To those who are called according to his purposes, it may not always seem so. It doesn't. It doesn't. Sometimes when we are suffering, and a lot of us are, are, are suffering or we have somebody who is suffering right now next to us. Experiencing heartbreak, tragedy, disappointment, frustration, and even death. That's life. But it's hard. We might wonder sometimes what good can ever come out of it. But the following verse that I had Sammy punch up over there. Right there. No, no, don't. You're fine. It's fine. Leave it right back there. Go back. Not that one. Back up. Back up. Go back, 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 back. There you go. Whatever God permits to come in our lives is designed to conform us to the image of his son. When we see this, it takes the question mark out of our prayers. Our lives are not controlled by impersonal forces such as as chance, luck, rolling dice, or even fate. They are controlled by something, someone much better, much more wonderful, our wonderful, loving, personal Savior. Who is too loving to be unkind and too wise to make a mistake. So guess what? Jesus has got this. And we can never, we can never, we can never, we can never, we can never pray too much, y'all. And we can never, never make a mistake when we allow Jesus to take, take charge of our life. And it's not a mistake to... To follow what he says, we have to follow what he says, even when we don't like it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the word today. I thank you for being able to just come to you in honest and sincere prayer. And just just, just tell you what, what you already know, but just to, to ask you, to seek you. You know, prayer is not always just telling telling you or our our, our, our problems, our, our emotions, and our feelings, though it is some of that prayer, it is, is also listening to you, Jesus. I pray that we, we learn to listen, Lord, that, we, that, we, that we, 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 we take away whatever sin that we have in our life that, that's, that we know is, needs to be taken out, and that we take that out, and that we conform more to your image. This life is just about you, and the next life is just about you. So I pray that we, 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 we learn to seek you more, Lord, and that we, we just never stop praying, Lord. It's all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I dare not end a sermon without offering you a lifeline. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please make a profession of faith today because tomorrow is not promised. Only death is. So please come up if you'd like to uh, give your life to Jesus Christ. Be born again that one time where you're baptized by the Holy Spirit and uh, make that happen. If you want to just talk to me about that, if, you're, if you don't want to talk to me after the service, that's fine. We can talk about that. You can meet with myself or one of our, our church leaders right here, Brother Robert. Uh, you can talk with us. Mm. Please come up. If you need special prayer, please come up. Now or during the end of the Invitational Tim. If you want information about this church, I'll be glad to talk to you after the service. So please come up or talk to me after thinking.
you close this out? All right, thank you, everybody. I didn't see any prayer requests on there, but um, I'm going to go ahead and have uh, Pastor Ron close us out in prayer. Father, 